Okay, I want you to picture this. Your phone is sitting right there, maybe on the table next to you. And at this very moment, it could be totally compromised. The chilling part? You'd have no idea. No weird links, no pop-ups, no funny looking apps. This attack is silent, it's invisible, and it doesn't even happen on your phone. It happens deep inside the network that makes your phone work in the first place. So how is that even possible, right? We're not talking about your typical phishing scams or malware here. This is something else entirely. It's a fundamental vulnerability, a flaw baked into the global mobile network itself. A flaw that an attacker, potentially on the other side of the planet, can exploit with just one piece of information, your phone number. So let's pull back the curtain and see exactly how this silent hack works. To get our heads around this, we need to look at a piece of critical infrastructure that, honestly, most people have never even heard of. It's kind of like a ghost in the machine, the hidden nervous system that connects every single mobile operator on the planet. And it's called SS7, which stands for Signaling System 7. Think of it as the backstage manager for the entire world's mobile network. Every time you make a call, send a text, or use your phone when you're traveling, SS7 is the thing handling all the behind-the-scenes logistics. It's setting up the call paths, figuring out where you are in the world for roaming, and delivering your texts. It's the invisible magic that makes your phone, well, just work, seamlessly, no matter where you are. But here's the absolute kicker. SS7's greatest strength is also its most glaring weakness. See, it was designed way back in the 1970s. This was before the public internet as we know it, a time when the global telecom world was basically a small exclusive club of big state-owned companies. They all knew each other, they all trusted each other, so they built this system with a level of trust just baked right in. Now, fast forward to today, that same network connects hundreds and hundreds of operators all over the globe, and let's just say not all of them have the same level of security. That old foundation of trust, it's now a massive, dangerous, and very exploitable flaw. So you might be wondering, if SS7 is this closed off network for operators, how does a hacker even get in? Yeah, this isn't something you can do from your laptop at a coffee shop. It's more like finding a secret, unguarded door into the very core of the telecom world. In reality, there are basically three main ways in. First, by abusing legitimate operator gateways. An attacker could compromise a server at a smaller, less secure mobile carrier and use that as a jumping off point into the whole system. Second, they can use a protocol called SIGTRAN, which lets them pretend to be an operator connecting over the internet. But, and this is super important, they can't just connect from anywhere. They still need a valid, authorized link into a carrier's network. And third, they could use super expensive industry-grade test equipment, the same kind of gear the operators themselves use for diagnostics. Now, I wanna be crystal clear about this. Accessing the SS7 network is strictly for telecom operators. Gaining unauthorized access is a serious crime, a major telecom intrusion with severe penalties. The only reason we're talking about these methods is so we can understand the threat, and more importantly, defend against it. And this brings me to a really common misconception I see out there. People think you can just use a cheap software-defined radio or SDR to hack SS7, and that's just not how it works. An SDR listens to radio waves, the signals traveling between your phone and the nearest cell tower. That's the radio layer. But SS7 lives on the core network layer. We're talking about fiber optic cables, massive servers, the actual backbone of the whole system. You can't just pluck SS7 commands out of the air. Okay. So let's imagine an attacker has done it. They found a way in, they have a foothold in this global telecom network. Now what? What can they actually do with just your phone number? Well, this is where it gets deeply, deeply unsettling. Once they're inside, they can start issuing commands like they're a legitimate mobile operator. They can tell the network to secretly reroute your phone calls to a device they control, letting them listen in on your conversations live. They can intercept every single text message you send or receive, reading them before they ever hit your phone. They can ask the network, hey, where's this phone? And because your phone is always talking to the nearest cell tower, they can track your physical location with frightening accuracy, often down to the very building you're in. They can even send texts that look like they came from your number. And listen, this is not a theoretical what-if scenario. There was a well-documented case in the UK back in 2016 where hackers used these exact SS7 attacks to drain people's bank accounts. They stole around $1 million. Let that sink in. A million dollars, just gone by exploiting a flaw in the phone network we all use every day. So how did they do it? The process is actually chillingly straightforward. Step one, the attacker goes to your bank's website and clicks forgot password. Step two, 
The bank, trying to be secure, sends a one-time verification code to your phone number via SMS. But here's the trick. The attacker, using their SS7 access, has already told the network to forward all your text messages to them. So they get the code, your phone never even buzzes, and they pop it into the bank's website. And just like that, they've bypassed your two-factor authentication and have full control of your account. Now, when you hear about a flaw in global infrastructure, it's easy to feel a little hopeless, you know? Like, what can I do? But that's not the case. While you can't go out and patch the SS7 network yourself, you can absolutely make your own digital life a much, much harder target. The key takeaway here is this. You have to reinforce your own security. You need to build layers so that even if one of them gets breached, the others will hold strong. And the single most important thing you can do right now is fix your two-factor authentication. So this right here is probably the most important slide. If you take away just one thing, let it be this. The two-factor authentication that relies on sending you a text message is vulnerable to this specific attack. It's way better than nothing for sure, but it is not foolproof. The solution is to move to stronger methods. Use a free authenticator app like Google Authenticator or Authy. These apps generate the codes right there on your device. They never travel over the mobile network, so they can't be intercepted. And for your most important accounts, get a physical security key, like a YubiKey. This is the gold standard. It's a little hardware device you plug in, and it's basically immune to this kind of remote attack. So what is the telecom industry doing about all this? I mean, they've known about these SS7 weaknesses for years, and there is a plan, but replacing a system that spans the entire globe, well, it's a very slow race. The industry's long-term answer is a much newer, much more secure protocol called Diameter. It was designed from the ground up for today's internet-based networks. And unlike SS7, it had security built in from day one, not as an afterthought. And really, the difference is night and day. You've got SS7, born in the 70s, operating on this old model of assumed trust. Then you have Diameter, from the 2000s, where authentication is mandatory, built right in. SS7 has no encryption by default, Diameter supports it natively. It's truly a generational leap forward, moving from a system based on a simple handshake to one based on modern cryptography. But here's the reality check. You can't just flip a switch and upgrade the entire planet's mobile infrastructure. It is an unbelievably slow and colossally expensive process. So even though diameter adoption is growing, the reality is that SS7 is still incredibly widespread. The two systems are going to have to coexist for many, many more years. Which means these vulnerabilities we've talked about, they're not going away anytime soon. All of this really brings us to a bigger, final question. A question about the hyper-connected world we're all building. A world that relies more and more on this invisible global network every single day. Think about it. We trust these networks with our finances, our private conversations, our physical safety, literally everything. But as we've just seen, some of the absolute foundations of all that connectivity were built for a completely different world with a completely different set of rules. And as our technology continues to race forward, it's a powerful reminder that sometimes the biggest dangers are hiding in the legacy systems just beneath the surface.